वेलकम फ्रेंड्स टू पावर प्लांट गुरु यूट्यूब चैनल फ्रेंड्स आई एम ए मैकेनिकल इंजीनियर विद अराउंड ट्वेंटी ईयर्स ऑफ एक्सपीरियंस इन द फील्ड ऑफ पावर प्लांट एंड आई यूज टू क्रिएट स्मॉल फंडामेंटल नॉलेज सीरीज वीडियोस फॉर पावर प्लांट इंजीनियर्स वी आल्सो रन डाउट क्लियरिंग सेशंस ऑन वीकेंड्स सो इफ यू वॉन्ट टू रीच एस यू कैन रीच एस थ्रू कमेंट सेक्शन एंड ज्वाइन आवर वीकेंड क्लासेस let us continue to watch our today's video hello friends so uh, we will talk about the differences of auxiliary boiler and hrsg in this video we are making this video based upon uh, different uh, request from our viewers they wanted to understand the differences between uh, hrsc and auxiliary boiler or you can call it as a utility boiler so that's what uh, we are going to cover in this uh, video so now if you see on the left side uh, uh, there is a hrsc image where you can see this uh, from hrsc you will definitely have a gas turbine exhaust which will supply the hot air into the boiler which is the source of heat so if you don't have hrsg these hot gases will go into the atmosphere as unused uh, waste heat so that is why this boiler is uh, required here to utilize this heat and the quantity may be very high here and uh, quantity you know will be dependent quantity of fuel gas uh, sorry flue gas will be dependent on gt loading so you don't have uh, control on air that how much air is coming so if you increase the gt load hot gases uh, will increase if you don't the gases will be according to gt load so that gives a direct indication of how the steam will be generated on the uh, quantity of the steam and uh, on the right side if you see uh, it is a auxiliary boiler or some people also call as a utility boiler so uh, this boiler you know uh, there is a no hot gases or no waste heat uh, sources are available so it is based on the requirement of uh, the process or steam the people run it as a auxiliary boiler so there are uh, maybe forced draft uh, most of the cases you will find otherwise you will find it a balanced uh, draft system so that is how uh, the system is designed and if you see uh, here if it is a forced draft or balanced draft system the operator or user have liberty to maintain uh, the draft and uh, how much uh, excess o2 what is the air to fuel ratio everything is in operator's control so you can uh, manipulate those variables to maintain your boiler performance uh, efficiency and other things that is uh, key difference but here you don't have any handle no uh, control whatsoever you have in hrsc so that is how one uh, difference is there and this difference also create a thing like if you have uh, your fans then you can have your uh, uh, higher pressure of air coming into furnace so you have uh, high draft which can help you to make that air flow however you want so that gives a liberty to you know put your uh, economizer or other equipments wherever you want to have so that is how you can see there are some some areas the flow of air is like this and if the flow uh, is like this but in hrsc what is there the flow is entirely in one direction so you you don't have that much force of air so you have to let it go wherever uh, in the straight direction you uh, it is going so that gives a little control over the size also of this boiler so you can save something on structural uh, steel and you can accommodate your equipment uh, different parts of the boiler in such area 
so that is also one constructional difference uh, which you have another point is uh, here in hrsc uh, the steam generation is totally dependent upon gas turbine loading but here you may have your uh, some burners which we call it a supplementary firing those are inline burners in uh, in line to the flue gas which is coming from gas turbine so if you want to run this uh, additional fuel fired burner so that will give you two benefit one is uh, increase on steam quantity another is you can have your steam temperature also in control many of time it happens that uh, without supplementary firing you lose the temperature steam temperature uh, goes down so this uh, supplementary firing gives you that uh, level of control so this is how on the constructional uh, basic features for the difference between hrsd and oxwall so let us talk about some other differences uh, which are uh, uh, by which we can differentiate uh, so one is you know uh, what we were discussing that high flue gas quantity which is coming from uh, gas turbine so here if you see that uh, these two points are interrelated the high quantity uh, is there but you know the delta t is not uh, much so you need to have uh, full utilization of the gases which is coming on so you have to have a very high uh, sorry large surface area compared to the auxiliary boiler so a rough uh, uh, calculation may be for the same capacity of uh, hrsg let's say 200 tons per hour uh, hrsg and ox boiler then uh, HRSG may have uh, three times uh, more surface area. This is a tentative number. Exact uh, numbers may be different, but this is how the uh, difference would be there. So you have a high surface area. To make this high surface area, the most of the fins in HRSG would be like this. If you you have your boiler tubes uh, uh, in uh, such a way, then you the tubes will be fin so you have a uh, uh, high surface area uh, basically in that uh, to increase your uh, heat transfer so that the quantity is high but the delta t is less so you want to increase but uh, on the opposite hand uh, in the ox boiler you are putting uh, air which is essentially required in the boiler so you can have a little more uh, temperature and uh, flow control where you have your auxiliary uh, sorry excess or air uh, in control air to fuel ratio you can control so you can uh, control the environment where the furnace uh, uh, is operating and heat transfer inside the radiant zone and the convective zone are there so here uh, you can uh, uh, take advantage of that and lesser surface area can also do the same amount of uh, uh, heat transfer so that is why you are having a bare tube uh, arrangement here uh, in the uh, auxiliary boiler another thing is that uh, hrsc may have your uh, waste heat uh, incoming and fuel firing supplementary fuel firing both are the option but here is the only option is you know the supply uh, burners uh, uh, that is the only way of uh, generating heat so let us take an example uh, uh, let's see you are uh, in that plant and uh, you have uh, one hrsg and one uh, utility boiler and uh, you have uh, your requirement of steam so let's say uh, what uh, will be your uh, take which one equipment you will utilize most you can type your answers in comment box however i will give uh, that answer but you can put, take a pause and type that answer in comment box later you can check so the answer is uh, the hrsc has to be utilized uh, at full because here you are utilizing the waste heat which is coming from the 
GT. If you don't utilize it, the uh, exhaust gases would go into the atmosphere, which is a total loss. Where in auxiliary boiler, a utility boiler, whatever steam you want to generate, you have to put a fuel according to that. So if you are not utilizing HRSG and generating steam in auxiliary boiler, so that will be a loss to the company. And normally these kind of boilers are uh, available in a chemical plant, petrochemical uh, industry or refinery industry or in other captive uh, power plant industry. Because these will be a smaller units and based on the requirement of steam supply to chemical plant and other processes, these will be required. Independent power plant may not have these kind of equipments, uh, or utility boiler or other smaller boiler. So that's all for today's video. Uh, I think uh, you might have learned something. And if you want to ask any question, you can ask uh, any question. And uh, in the next video, we are going to come up with some uh, more topic on HRSG only. Thank you. Thank you for watching uh, Power Plant Glue. Thank you very much.